Hey folks, Cool18 here and welcome to a Civilization 6 video where we're going to look at three mods, two of which represent changes to, honestly, that should have been in the base game and I have said multiple, multiple times should have been in the base game. And the third one is a UI revamp that I think a lot of players who spend a fair amount of time playing Civ will really, really appreciate. Now, unfortunately, at this time, um... The, the final UI revamp mod doesn't play nicely with the first two, but they are looking into maybe uh, increasing that compatibility. So we'll cross our fingers that we'll be able to use all of them in the future. So let's start off, first of all, with the Better Trade Screen mod, which has been out and about for a little while and eliminates one of the major complaints that I have in Civ 6, which is... By default, when you have a trade route, normally there's a filter. There's a filter where you can say, only show me trade routes that have, say, production, or only show me trade routes that have gold, or something like that. But for some stupid reason, I don't know why, when you filter by, say, production, it doesn't sort by production. It doesn't sort by anything. I don't know if it's just distance or, or, or um, trade route time or what the sorting logic is there. But it doesn't actually sort by the value that you're looking at, which seems really silly to me. If you filter to only show routes with production, to me, it should sort by production. And for some reason, the default Civ 6 UI does not do that. So luckily, this is where Ace Dog's um, better trade screen mod comes in. It does just a slight tweak over here. Instead of um, instead of having a pull down for things like um, trade routes with production, for example, it's got these buttons over here that allow you to sort by a column. So the gold one would be an excellent example over here. If I sort by gold, we can see Amsterdam with its five gold over here gets to the top of the list. Not only that, but you can also do two sorts. So if I, I sort by production, for example, and then I hold shift, I can add a second sort for food. You can see both arrows are there. And actually, as I hold shift, you can see the numbers one and two. So this is a list that is sorted by production first and then subsorted by food, which means that Jabalpur is at the top of the list. Or I could say uh, sort by production up or down and then sort by gold. And, and of course, Kabul will stay at the top of the list here. This is going to become much, much more handy as your possible trade routes increase. Apparently, if you're playing on a very, very large map and you have a lot of trade route possibilities, uh, which um, happens a lot if there's a lot of trading posts, then um, sometimes pulling up this list might be a tiny bit slow, um, which might be one of the reasons that they didn't necessarily implement it in the base game itself. But I am willing to take, you know, a second of lag time opening up this UI in exchange for having an amazing, amazing ability to sort these trade routes, which is going to save so, so much damn work going forward. And you can still filter here um, all international routes, which is nice for... Um, certain civics, as well as possible tourism boosts, for example. You might be interested in that. City-states with a trade quest. How amazingly brilliant is that as a filter? And then the ability to choose um, just different nations as well. I think that's a fantastic a little tweak to the game that, to me, represents what the base game should be. Um, I didn't even need a special UI for, like, multi-sorting. The, the multi-sorting in this mod is, like, gravy on top of some really amazing thing that gravy belongs on but um just the fact that you can at least do one sort i may never use the double sort i don't know but the singleton sort stupendous and amazing and i'm so thankful for that but even bigger than this potentially for me is ace tog's other mod he has come up with a more lenses mod and in it he credits me for the idea for the the the, the lens for builders now it's easy to come up with ideas. Ideas are a dime a dozen. I don't think, you know, I deserve any kind of credit for this, other than the fact that I ranted about it so many times that at least someone has heard me. Ace Tog has implemented in his More Lenses mod many, many, many new lenses. Now, there's a lot of different options in here that can offer up some very cool possibilities, but the one thing that I have been yelling about that needed to be in the base game is a lens for builders. Consider this, they have the settler lens, which, oh my god, fantastic, color codes the world based on where you can't settle, where you can settle, and then um, color coded based on the freshwaterness, right? This is just coastal, this is freshwater, this is the settler lens that is built into the game, and that's great, I was really, I thought that was awesome. But I can't understand why they didn't also include a builder lens, but luckily, Ace Dog's mod is adding that in here, and color codes the world within your borders based on what kind of builder actions you may want to do. 
The red tiles are places where there is nothing to do. These are places where you either have a district, so for example, the city center, or the um, the campus over here. I suspect that if my borders went over the mountains, they would also be color coded red. He also color codes red the places where you've already built an improvement over here, which seems fine. The gray tiles are just generic tiles, so this is just say grassland over here. One thing I hadn't considered is that he also color codes removable features. So this light green over here highlights the fact that there's a marsh that we can remove. Here's a forest that we can remove. So if you want to do some chopping. There you go. Also, he highlights in green hills. Um, for example, here's a, uh, this is actually colored bright green because it's a hill, which means it's gonna be a place where you can build a mine, for example. And finally, in purple, he highlights resources that have not been improved as well as pillaged improvements. And unique ability, what, I, I don't know, that'd be places for like China's Great Wall or something like that. Um, it'll be interesting to see where that comes up. That's going to be a Civ specific thing. But you can clearly see now at a glance, without even thinking about it, I know, okay, I need to set up a die, die, stone, some rice over here. As my borders expand, I'll remember that. If I've got an extra couple of uh, things going on, maybe I want to boost production by doing a chop of the forest here to increase the rate of Jabalpur. Uh, we could also clear the marsh at some point. Like early on, I like to leave the marshes because early on, the marsh is as good as a farm, basically, with a plus one food. But later on, farms become better. So then um, I'll either want to build a farm on here or I may want to remember to clear it first. But this is like, this at a glance um, lens is exactly what we needed in the game. And I, I think if you're one of the people who worked on this game, right, and you've already got these other lenses, right, you don't, you're not a third party person who's opening up the code and trying to figure out how the modding interface works. If you're someone who works, say, at Firaxis, you can't tell me that this would have taken like more than a half an hour or something to throw it. No, sorry, a half a day is what I meant to say. Half a day to throw this together. How hard could it have possibly been um, for someone there? As a third party, this uh, ace dog figuring out how to mod this in needs a lot more work. So, you know, kudos to you for putting in the effort for what I think is something that should have been in the base game. And what a wonderful, beautiful little implementation. I'm really, really, really excited about that. And not only that, but there's a bunch more lenses that uh, ace dog has put in here. We've got an archaeologist lens, which highlights artifacts and shipwrecks. The other thing that I'm super blind about all the time. Um, you know, it's always annoying to me that... I can show resource icons or not show them, but to, you know, just really highlight just archaeological stuff can be kind of hard for me to be able to see. So the archaeologist mode, which doesn't do anything right now because we haven't discovered archaeology, will highlight artifacts and shipwrecks. There's also a city overlap mode, which is super duper handy for figuring out um, where to put things like factories or um, arenas, right? Entertainment centers for the six tile overlap. So these areas here that are yellow, that's two cities. So if I built a factory or an industrial zone anywhere in this yellow area, then eventually when it became a factory, it would give a production bonus to two cities if I built it here. And then as you build more cities, the color coding keeps changing. So you can find all the sweet spots where one industrial zone or arena will cover multiple cities. There's another mode over here for a city overlap of nine. Now, I don't think these two modes should have been in the base game. You know, you don't, you don't want to overcomplicate the UI. But as a mod, huh, this, this is what mods should be here for. The builder mode and archaeologist mode, this, this should be in the base game, honestly. But this like great stuff. We've got some barbarian highlights so we can see encampments a little bit easier on the map. Not that there are any right now. I think I've cleared them all out in this little test game that I had going on. Highlight all resources, including, so luxury, unconnected, right? All the purple ones that are unconnected. This is including outside your border. Builder mode only shows within your borders. Um, but it also, it uh, separates luxury from bonus from strategic over here, which is quite nice and handy. And unconnected strategic resources are in red. So you get to see that right away. Um, it might be nice if there was a toggle for borders. Although, I guess if it's inside your borders, you just use the builder mode. Here we can see in red. Actually, that's actually a good idea. Right here we can see, oh my god, iron. It stands out. I'm not going to miss iron as much. And in fact, this mode makes it really easy to figure out good places to settle cities, right? Like right away, we can see a cluster at a glance of, hey, we probably want a city over here. All this wheat, the sheep, and then the iron. Fantastic. In a way that... Um, the settler mode shouldn't, I don't think should highlight the resources. I think the settler mode, this is more like water mode over here. And I think that's fine. So then you can use the two of them to flip back and forth, which is great. Uh, we've got a wonders mode, which highlights, um, which highlights wonders, but, uh, like right here, right? The Dead Sea. 
Excellent. Cool. Excellent. Uh, adjacency yield. This is adjacency yield for districts, so that, you know, why not? I don't know if I'll use it, but it's there. And another mode that highlights Goody Huts um, in purple, and I don't know if we've got any to, to look at, but there it is, you know. Because why not? It's at this point, once you've figured out the system, uh, you can add a bunch of these. Now, right now, there's no easy way to just add an extra lens, exactly. Um, Ace Dog has had to mod the, the sort of minimap logic over here um, overall to do this. So um, I don't know how well we're going to be able to get multiple minimap mods to work together. But one of the things that the Civ community has always done over time is coordinate with each other and consolidate mods and do things like that. And uh, so I suspect that we've got a bright future ahead of us there. And frankly, I mean, if all that ever existed for the history of time was this lenses mod, Holy crap. That, frankly, just this one button, this builder mode makes me so freaking happy because it makes it so easy to see where stuff is. And it's worth noting, this is another little slick move. Look at that. When you select a builder, it automatically shows that lands. Just like when you have a settler selected, it automatically shows the settler lands. Select a builder, it automatically shows the builder lands. Um, I'm willing to bet that if you have an archaeologist selected, it probably shows the archaeology lens as well, but this, this little test game was a little too early over here. Now, because they are mods, you can't, um, you can't add them to an existing save. It's only going to be a new game that takes advantage of them. I'm actually going to quit to the main menu right now to showcase that. You can see mods in use over here. And it's under additional content where you enable these mods over here. So the more lenses and the better trade screens, you go and turn those two on like that. Now, the other mod I want to showcase is the, I don't know, would this be Chow? Cow? It's probably Chow, actually. Chow's quick UI over here. Um, and because it modifies some of the same things that um, the more lenses modifies, you can't run them both at the same time. Um, one will just override the other. Uh, I don't know about the better trade screen. I'll turn it off as well. We'll just load up a cow's quick UI over here and do that. And actually, I happen to have a save ready for that. Um, and because I'm loading a save, I didn't actually have to tune the additional content. It will properly load it as is. But if I load this up and show the, there we go, this one over here. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the, the first cow, shush you, shush. Water. Look at Cow's Quick UI, and I'm just going to bring up the feature list here so that I don't miss anything. But this is a big, very handy mod. It is currently a little bit more in development. Because it's a bigger mod, there's a lot more to it. So there's a lot more little things to sort of tweak and, you know, things that might be, um, I don't know, 100% implemented or they, there might be a little bug here or there. I haven't really experimented with it very much. Um, the uh, there There's no official build yet for Civ 6 post-winter patch or fall patch I should say um, but you can download the master file directly um, and still apply that so um, definitely still in development I, I may not you know just as at the time that I'm making this video there's not an official fall patch version of this but it'll probably happen relatively soon you can see in this game I'm just beset by um, by barbarians which is you know fantastic I basically just ran the game long enough to be able to um, showcase a few th different things so first of all um, right on the main screen there's a little bit of extra info on the city panel over here um, I think the garrison defense strength was moved over to the right because I think it was up in the middle and we've got some extra stats some numbers over here showing us um, some growth information and the three of six there is the housing info I realize it's a little bit small on the yub tubs but you know you can see some housing numbers at a glance a little bit more there'll also be more icons that start to show up over here to give you some information um, like I think there'll be a food icon that shows up on this little city bar when um, to indicate cities that have just grown this turn you can also see that as I mouse over this it automatically starts to show yields it also shows which tiles are being worked on by my population and I believe what you can do is you can shift click on a tile in city screen or alt click or something I don't know, maybe it was an optional mode uh, where it could um, it could just dive you right into um, the ability to place uh, um, civilians, but I'm not sure what that hotkey is, and I'm not sure that's something I particularly care about. Much more important is this, right? The whole idea is this is a, it's Cow's Quick UI, and what does that mean? Well, when I click on Kyoto, it opens up the full city panel right away, very Civ 5 style. He's also condensed some of the views over here, like the amenities are condensed. Uh, it's easier to say things, see things at a glance. There's less flavor text put in there. Um, 
and so more information fits on the screen immediately. So there's just fewer clicks, fewer need to, to sort of scroll around and modify things. The whole idea is convenience and getting rid of unnecessary clicks. So again, you click on Kyoto and it opens up everything. We also get a sort of Civ 5 style building screen, which includes a queue over here, as you can see. So we've got a queue that you can go and you can drag to reorder the building queue as well, which is really fantastic. We get the buy button right over here. You'll notice that there's no longer any buttons over here to enter tile buying mode, unit buying mode, uh, faith buying mode, nothing like that. No need to use these buttons. You get the one singleton of you right away. Uh, so you can buy this. I assume if I had the ability to faith buy, there would be a button for faith buying a particular thing over here, which is fine. Um, we get the yields, we get this, but then again, there's no reason that you should have to hit a button to go and purchase a tile. I mean, frankly, when you're placing districts, they have the tile buying feature automatically implemented right away. So right away, much, much, much better city screen. Really, 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 really think that's quite fantastic. Um, oh, I'm, yeah, see, because I didn't do a fresh reload, there might be a couple of buttons missing. Uh, when you do change mods, it's usually a good idea to quit the program completely and reload it. Here's another change that is a huge lifesaver. Clicking on the government button, there is no stupid my government tab or my policies tab or whatever it's called. Normally there's a first tab which does nothing. It just shows you what your policies are. But the thing is the view policy screen also shows you what your policies are but lets you change them. The very first tab on the government screen is 100% useless and it's the one that comes up by default all the time when you open the government screen. So this mod simply eliminates that tab, gets you right to the, my, the view policy screen right away where you can change your policies if, if we had it unlocked right from a civics or something like that, saving you a bunch of effort, which is great. Um, ooh, yeah, okay. Another thing that is a wee bit of a time saver is when you open the tech tree, it automatically sets the keyboard focus to the search window. Right? So if you open the tech and then you search for, I don't know, iron working, hey, look at that. You can just start typing. You don't have to like find the little click thing or anything like that. It's such a tiny, tiny little UI tweak, but it's brilliant. Same thing also applies to the civics tree over here. Um, what else? Oh, the great person screen over here has been embiggened so that you don't have to scroll sideways. Now that, again, this is a good example of something that maybe is most appropriate in a mod because what happens if someone has a smaller screen or this or that, um, the built-in solution is really well suited to a much more flexible uh, UI size. Um, I, I don't know how, how this mod scales this based if you've got a smaller monitor, maybe it just gets cut off uh, and so it wouldn't be appropriate for you. But for most people with a sort of 16 by nine ratio, this is fantastic. No more goddamn scrolling around for great people. I love it. It's great. Really, really, really big improvement. Um, let's see, what else was there? Okay, so there's the Civ 5 style city view. That's one thing, right? That's this over here. There's the great panel renovated. There's the, oh, improved um, amenities city detail screen, which I talked about over here, much, much better. The My Government tab was removed from the government panel, right? This thing over here. Uh, production panel units compressed and reordered. That's this over here, which I think is great. Oh, oh, the map pinning system. Yes, 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 yes. So the map pin list over here, add pin. And if I drop a pin over here, a bigger screen over here. Um, new pins, a longer pin list. Oh, long pin lists are now scrollable. Uh, you can right click on a pin list to quickly delete pins. Um, and the enter key is now by, bound to finalizing a pin in the pin creation menu. Uh, and clearly, so hitting enter before, there was we lots of weird behavior with pins, and I don't know if this fixes them all, but it might. So we'll see. Also, I don't think that that edit button was there before. I might be wrong, but I'm not sure that it was. Maybe it was there before. But, I mean, extra icons, which is great. District icons? Because I kept doing something like this, right? And being like, okay, so this is going to be my industrial zone or something like that. But now I can actually use the icon for industrial zone. To show up on the map there to remind myself that I'm going to build that. You know, just a little more icons and clarity. It's groovy. Um, the tech civic tree and civilopedia. Oh, that's that's useful because why is this search bar not auto auto focused normally, right? Now it is. I don't have to click on that field. You just click, type, boom, done. You've got your swordman up there. Um, civic slash tech pop ups can be disabled. 
Um, but the, you can still have the voiceover play. So when you unlock a new technology, instead of getting a pop-up window, it'll just give you a little alert. And you'll still hear Sean Bean tell you about the technology, but if you don't want the uh, the, the tech or civic pop-ups to happen, you don't have to. That is an optional thing that you can tune. Um, and yeah, see, I'm pretty sure because of the way I loaded this mod, normally this minimap would actually be twice as big. <gasps> it's because, yes, it still has the old mod listed in. That's what happened here. You see this? I'm... It's because it still has, which is interesting because, oh uh, yeah, it's because of the order that loaded in. So this time around, I it, it loaded the more lenses after loading the quick UI. As such, it's the more lenses version of the minimap that's here, which means I have access to my lenses, which is great, but it means I don't have access to the button to configure this mod because normally the first of all this minimap is doubled in size by default and there's a button here to tune the mod and set all bunch of options so that's where you enable and disable uh civ slash civic slash tech pop-ups as well as choose whether the uh the voiceover is heard um you can get it to, sp to make a pop-up notification at 50 percent research progress so you know all those times when i want to half research a tech right when i do this thing i half research say currency um and then stop because at some point I will do a trade route and then I'll get the boost from it to auto complete it. And sometimes I forget to stop. So I'm like three quarters of the way through or even I finished the whole thing when I was like, no, I didn't want to finish now. I, don't only, I only wanted to go to halfway so that I could then pop an inspiration for this thing later on. Well, you can configure an alert to do that. And I'd love to show you, but yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to quit all of Civ 6 and reload it just to not have the, um, uh, the lenses mode in here. Um, the minimap can be toggled to original size or double size, which is nice. Um, dedicated mod settings menu with persistent settings. Uh, citizen management icons are overhauled to make seeing a yield info better. Um, yeah, so that's this stuff. There's, there's a bunch more little pop-ups and icons that will happen as your city expands. So you can get a lot more useful information. Uh, growth slash prog production progress is enumerated in the city panel. So, oh, right over here, look at this, 9.3 of 50 food, plus two food per turn. We get some more information there, as well as the time. You know, just more information at a glance, without cluttering up the unit or interface too much. Uh, improved resource icons are dimmed to emphasize unutilized resources. Oh, that's interesting. So, okay, we can't see an example here. But the idea being, if I go and build a quarry on the stone, the icon for the stone will be at like 50% transparency. So the unimproved resources will pop a lot more. And that is actually something I'd mentioned. I'd actually mentioned um, that resources, originally I said if resources within your borders that weren't improved, if you did like a right outline or something like that, that might be cool. This mod, and but that could be a little tricky to implement. This mod just fades out icons of resources you've improved, which is fine. But as long as I've got this freaking builder filter, I, I'm, I'm not going to care about that one way or another, but it's, I think, a good improvement. Uh, Civ 5 keybinds were implemented. There are um, there are multiple modes for it. Again, I would show you in the options menu, but there's a classic mode which uh, recreates the Civ 5 binding scheme, um, as well as an enhanced Civ 5 binding scheme where WSAD is assigned to camera control and you can use Q and E to cycle between cities and units. Therefore, you got just your, your, your classic sort of WASD placement, um, and then you've got Q and E for these extra tools, which is very handy. Um, and you can hit shift to switch between city and unit selection mode with that, which is kind of nice. Um, unit actions like cell delete are no longer hidden behind an expando. Yeah, why was that? Or um, cell delete and also the auto explore. Why? Oh, why did I have to go and hit a little expando thing over here to be able to see the buttons to delete or um, automate um, scouting on a unit? I have no idea why that was the case. It's not like there's too many icons here. Maybe they're considered slightly more advanced. I have no idea. But now that little expanding um, fold-out thing is gone, so you always see all of your buttons. God damn, this is such a good mod. Unit XP bars are twice as tall. Hey, that's fantastic, because unit XP bars are generally hard to see. Oh, this. Yeah, just a little bit thicker. Just very nice. I like that. And tile tooltips spawn nearly instantly. So you don't have to hover quite as long as before to get there. It looks like it's maybe maybe about half a second delay, which is fine. I think that can be tunable as well. Oh, yeah. So growth amenities and border growth. Oh, that's a third number. So we're going to grow in 21 turns. 
our borders are going to grow in eight turns and then we can see our housing limit over here and there's a smart banner which is a toggleable option that will display green icons indicating non-locked citizens and district icons indicating built districts over here which is kind of handy as well so you can see at a glance that this is an industrial zone for example we don't have to go looking around for the tiles which is really handy um, right clicking the action panel down here will instantly end of turn even when things like production slash research slash unit moves have not been decided and eh, I don't know if I care about that um, it, the mod also removes production slash worker recommendations so when you look over here you'll no longer get a tip about what to build um, which I guess is fine I normally like the builder recommendations because sometimes it'll spot it, that a improvement hasn't been improved but again I won't need that now because if I'm using this lens mode, for example. Uh, let's see what else. Better trade screen features. So this mod also overhauls the trade screen, which includes... Um, actually, it seems to include the better trade UI directly. I can't test it here, but it seems to do something relatively similar to the better trade UI. Um, new yield slash destination filtering options. Yeah. I don't know if it's an actual exact copy or what, but it's got that. So I guess I don't have to run the um, the, tr the other trade mod, which is nice. Uh, let's see. Remembers last used tab. Available routes show all possible routes, even if trade unit is not present in the origin city. Clicking on a route where a free trade unit is not present in the origin city. Oh! Oh, it'll, there's an option to show literally all trade routes. So let's say I had multiple cities, right? Um, and there's maybe there, I, I'm looking for the trade route that makes the more, the most money. And let's say it happens to be Kyoto to Valletta, Valletta, but I'm currently in, you know, some other city over here. I'm in the city of Bob and I got a trade route there. It'll still show me optionally, uh, if I sort by highest gold, the trade route from Kyoto to Valletta, in which case, if I click on that, it'll instead change me to the mode to get the unit to transfer to another city. Good God. That's fantastic. I love that. Um, city states with trade quests have an icon showing they have that quest tourism and visibility bonus is now on each trade route that's actually really handy as well um, looks like it incorporates another mod called divine Yuri's custom city panel features which include a new city panel tooltip oh I guess um, if we look at like the food over here oh ooh, that's very nice this is slightly different stats over here It'll give me it'll show you modifiers like if you're negative amenities, then it'll show up in here as a penalty to your various growth and stuff like that. That's good to know. Um, oh, even something like here. These are oh, these all things. OK, we get more pop up information on these, which isn't very visible right now because Kyoto is not very developed because it's just like the start of a new game over here. So there's not a lot going on. There's that um next city plot features which has been built into the base game at this point so that's a little bit redundant and actually that's probably one of the things they've updated but they this mod used to add this next plot info which was not present before in the base game so that's really nice actually i'm not sure that this little um capsule shape uh, pop-up was in the base game is still in the base game i think the purple square is but i think the way that they're listing things is slightly different which is fine um, displays population growth rate next feature so tons of changes over here now let's talk about installing these things um, I am not gonna do tech support for you at all here but uh, I will tell you that this mod the um, Chow's quick UI mod is installed differently from the other two mods most mods you go into your documents slash my games slash Sid Meier's Civilization 6 slash mods folder and you put them in there. And that is indeed, uh, main menu, yes. That is indeed how the first two mods I showed you are installed, right? So the more lenses and better trade screen get put in your document slash my games, et cetera, et cetera, folder. The cows quick UI actually gets installed into your DLC folder in your actual game installation, uh, probably because it has to override more stuff. So the quickest way to find that, where your game is actually installed, is in your Steam library. If you right click on the game in your Steam library uh, and choose properties, a window will open up and there's a tab called local files. And in local files, there's a button that says browse local files. Um, and in there, 
there'll be a DLC folder, and that's where you put this mod. I mean, all the mods, uh, th this it does explain for this mod, since it is a little bit weird, where or how you would install that. But you install it in a slightly different place, and you have to make sure that when you start your game, go to additional content, make sure to enable the correct mod. And again, um, once you, uh, it doesn't change any existing save, and in fact, if you save a game with mods, when you load that save, it will automatically load the same mods that you went in with. Again, Cow's Quick UI here, uh, conflicts with more lenses and better trade screen. Um, it sounds like it's redundant with better trade screen. So it sounds like if you have this, you don't need better trade screen. More lenses, though, um, there'll be a conflict because they both try to modify something about the minimap and only the probably the second one that loads will take effect. So if you try to load both, only one of them will take effect, which may or may not be ideal. To me, um, it, the, the downside means um, if... Uh, if the more lenses is active, then you lose the ability to access the preferences menu of Cow's Quick UI. But as far as I can tell, that's the only change. That's the only thing that Cow's Quick UI really brings to the party there. So to me, I would be very happy if more lenses kicked in all the time. And I, in the short run, until these mods all get, start to work together, I will probably... Um, see what I can do to just like force that to happen so I can run cows quick UI and more lenses together hunky dory and I probably don't need better trade screens but to me these are just stupendous improvements to the game again the quick UI is under heavy development and does not have an official build for the fall patch yet although it seems to work relatively okay so you may not want to get married to the quick the current one here because who knows maybe you'll get crashes but the more lenses and better trade screen seem to be very very simple they're very focused mods so they're less likely to run into issues and the lenses one in particular is very very simple and uh yeah so Thank you for watching this. Ended up talking a little longer about them than I would like. Of course, the links are going to be down below in the doobly-doo, so you can follow that um, to get to the pages where you can download these various mods and breathe new life into the Civ 6 UI. Thanks for watching. See you next time.